Hi everybody, my name is Max Maker and I wanted to give you an update about the driveway and how the flowers have grown in. But there's a major event that got into the way and that is flash flooding. Somehow on one day the entire street flooded and went all into our basement. So this video is about all the improvements I made to the house to stop this flood damage from ever happening again. So stay tuned for that. This is how it started. There was a major rainstorm and I was just casually filming uh, when I suddenly noticed that there's a rush of water coming from the hill rushing down the street and onto our property. So this was the big problem. Our house is 12 years old and it can handle any rain really well. But this was just too much and it wasn't even our rainwater. i never seen something like this before. Shitty water comes over there. I try to block it as best as I can but it's just too much. Oh, just because of this stupid little area, we need to build some kind of dam here. This area is nice and dry, but over here, shit. <laughs> it's just because this little area. Here the water flows down and then overflows and then here's the gully. There is a big um, drain here and a big one over there, but it's not enough. A lot of the water you just saw found its way into the house uh, through the only basement window that we have uh, and I spent the night uh, shoveling all this water into the basement pump from where it got pumped outside. I just installed this uh, as an off chance I might use it last year and I'm so lucky I did. So this is where the water came over and this is, uh, you just saw how it was here uh, and here it's all downhill. It can just flow into the river, flow through the garden, I don't care. Uh, it can just free flow. It's just that it went over there and in there instead of going around. So we just have to divert the water and then we'll be fine. But at least the garden looks really, really nice. The next morning I continued with the cleanup and now it was time to clean out all the water from the elevator shaft. So put a steel rod in there and the vacuum pulls out all the water and from the vacuum it flows here into the sump pump. To get rid of these 900 liters of water the pump took 13 minutes. This was filmed while the water was still rushing in and this is the only basement window we have and we need it for ventilation. We cannot just block it off. So we need to make sure water can't come through here again. Over there was the water and this is pretty much ground level so we need to make this higher. First I need to remove this um, and I hope I can reach these screws in there. I had to climb inside. This is really claustrophobic. <laughs> I hope I can exit from this side once I've got the screw loose. Don't think any of this is waterproof anyway. So we probably have to pull the concrete all the way to down here. This is not for standing water, this is just for for flash water. It doesn't need to be perfectly waterproof, just so the big currents flow past and... Oh, this is a nice perspective. So I went to the workshop and built this concrete form out of some old scraps that I had lying around. Uh, and then it was time to fill it up with concrete. I made sure there's some styrofoam here at the top in the inside so we have a little latch for the uh, old grate so it can go back in there. And then we mix up some concrete. The first mix was a little too wet so we split it up into two buckets. And we made this mix super wet so it can flow into these cavities really nicely. Uh, if it's too dry it wouldn't flow properly and it would just be a hassle. This way it's not as strong as it could be but this is not really structural concrete anyway. It's really just to keep the main currents of water out of uh, the basement. Uh, we vibrated the forms a little bit with just a hammer drill and that really seemed to do the trick. Uh, I don't do a lot of concrete work but this turned out really really nicely. Apart from this defect right here, I just demolded it a little too early. Uh, it was still soft but I couldn't wait. Uh, and the foam uh, came out really easily so uh, I think the foam is a really great way to, to build these forms with. And the grate still fits, so I'm really happy with that. That is one part of the flood defenses done uh, onto the next one, and that is uh, diverting the main water flow. So we need to build some kind of dam here, raise up this level a bit so the water can just flow around the building, all the way to over here from where it's downhill again. I wasn't sure how high this dam has to be, so I took a laser level at night and just uh, made some marks to uh, where I think it would be appropriate. So this is about 20 centimeters higher than it was before. So I think we have a really good margin of error in there. Uh, especially since the last 12 years we didn't have this problem. This is the first time this happened. So my buddies and I, we removed all these pavers here and it was a really easy work. This took about 10 minutes only. And we stacked them up and we stacked them up like this so they're easy to grab again. Because we're gonna put them straight back down again. 
So we need to build a dam right here and we want it to connect to the existing pavement. So the dam kinda has to be here in the middle. And we're using crushed concrete as a underlayment. So that's just recycled concrete and we kinda modeled it so the dam would be in the middle. And for the sides uh, we still need some kind of border walls so we're using steel again. Because I really like working with steel and I think that's the only stuff that really goes well with the red bricks. Because this will get red eventually um, and concrete borders they would just be too prominent. It wouldn't be fitting, at least not for this house. We drill some holes and then put some bolts in there and these will act as anchors into the concrete so you can't just pull this back out again. Then we mix some concrete and pour it in there. This mix is definitely too wet, <laughs> we're still learning here. Uh, it's quite difficult to judge uh, how, how much water you need to put in there, it's always less. We installed two of these pieces of steel and they are perfectly level to each other uh, and that gave us the highest point of the dam, so that's this line right here. So this new pavement has to gently slope upwards to the top and then gently slope downwards again so we have nice transitions to the existing pavement. Um, to make sure everything stays straight, I pulled some strings, um, dug these little channels and then I concreted in the border walls. This time not with steel, but with bricks and for that I had to mix some concrete. And this has to be quite a dry mix, so the bricks have good support and they don't just uh, float away while the concrete is setting. So I just followed the red lines as guide marks and made sure that all of these bricks are uh, touching, just about touching the red lines. And that way everything is super nice and straight. Uh, oftentimes I have to remove a brick, uh, remove some more con concrete underneath and put it back in. Uh, but it's overall it's pretty easy. You just have to do a few of them and then you get a hang of it. Did it on both sides and all the way to the ends. Uh, just at the very end I had to do some cuts and this was on a Sunday so I can't make any noise on Sundays. And the next day was super super rainy. So this was some heavy rain but it wasn't really a thunderstorm rain. And you can see the water flows around the property um, and then it's fine. It just changes the size of the road and then continues down the hill and nobody is bothered by this. It just flows into the river. And the plan with the new dam is that it continues flowing around this corner and not getting onto our property. There is a risk that it could go through the flower bed, so we're also installing a dam made out of steel in there. Um, and this will blend in really nicely because it's just the color of the wood chips anyway. Uh, and this is about 5 meters long and 30 centimeters high, so it's a super high wall. I don't think the water will ever go through here and this won't rust away either. We concreted it in, filled it back up um, with the wood chips and now we have a really nice barrier. Uh, and it's just controlling the flow of the water really. Uh, we can't stop the water, we can't make this water tight. But as long as it rushes around the property, we will be fine. Another two days later, I started laying down these bricks and it was still raining that day, but uh, I wanted to get this finished and my buddies only had time on that day, so <laughs> we really pulled through in the rain. And here at the top, we had to make the mitre. So we marked this with some spray paint. We just put these straight edges down uh, and that gave us a really good uh, mark on all of the bricks and where we had to cut them. So I just scored them with an angle grinder and then gave them a whack and that uh, broke them off very cleanly and that's super easy to do. Uh, I didn't want to rent a big saw again like I did in January. And the mitre came out pretty well. As long as the angle on the bricks is always consistent, uh, you cannot really get this wrong. Uh, these bricks are really forgiving. You can just wiggle them around a bit and it will look fine at the end. I had to wait a few days for the weather to clear up because this is a polymer sand that is water activated. So I torched all of the surfaces to get rid of any residual moisture and then I could apply the sand. So this sand is mixed with some kind of glue and once you wet the glue it gets sticky and that forms kind of a chewing gum like texture. Uh, so I just brushed everything in, made for sure everything is topped up. And at this stage the bricks are really uneven. Some are sticking out more than the others, but we're changing that with the compactor. Uh, I got this from the hardware store and unloaded it with my little forklift. That's just an amazing tool to have. And then I compacted it for about 15 minutes, uh, back and forth all the time, and that really nicely evened everything out. But I also had to fix some of the bricks that moved out of place. But I just pushed them back in and put some more sand in there. And after that I was done with that I had to remove the residual sand from the top with a leaf blower because when you miss the polymer for the first time it starts to harden and if there's any polymer sand on top of the bricks it will form a layer of sand on top uh, and it doesn't look right. I kept watering this about every two hours. So I had enough time to go back to the hardware store to return the compactor and when I came back I watered it some more all the way uh, to the evening 
uh, and this is how it looks like afterwards. It looks super, super nice. And here you can see how even these bricks are now. Uh, they're just one plane and it's really pleasant to walk over them. And I specifically wanted to use this polymer sand because it doesn't get washed away when it's raining. Because after all, this is a dam, so it has slopes on both sides. So while I was in the hardware store, I also got one of these bags of wood bark and that looks nice and it also prevents the weeds from growing. So now we have a fun little obstacle that also prevents the property from flooding. The pathway looks amazing now and we had to redo this anyway because it wasn't that well built to begin with. Uh, but we're not done there yet with the flood defenses. All the water came in through this window and behind the window there is kind of a volume there of water where the water can fill up. But if it doesn't drain fast enough we added another pump to pump it back out. It looks like we're getting more and more of these extreme weather events, so I really want to prepare the house so something like this cannot happen again. And I cannot mitigate all the risks, but I think adding all these pumps and doing all these small measures will ultimately just lower the risk, so uh, that's what I'm going for here. Another thing I noticed that evening is if the water comes in here before it can go around into the sump pump, which is behind this door, from where it gets pumped out automatically, so that is fine. And we have it here because this is where the main uh, water line comes in. Uh, before it goes in there, it will go into these storage areas and flood this whole area. And we really don't want that. So we need a way to get it from the window straight to down there. So I'm building this internal rain gutter that will be underneath the window. It's just some sheet metal and then we have an adapter here to attach a hose to it and the hose will go straight into the sump pump. And with every project I'm learning a little bit more about welding uh, and one of you guys recommended to get one of these glass cups and it's much easier to see what you're welding. Doesn't look that great but um, with the grinder you can just grind it off and it's waterproof so this is good enough for me. I'm cutting off this stainless steel pipe uh, with a pipe cutter, a really cool tool to have. And of course I also need a hole in the side of the sheet metal and I'm using these punches for that. I've got one of each size and you need to drill a pilot hole, then feed this bolt through and then you really cinch this down and uh, you, you need a big wrench for this uh, or even better an impact gun. So I'm using this big Metabo impact gun that I have uh, and this is really a lot of force required to cut this two millimeter steel but it barely does it. Um, and you end up with a beautiful hole and it's also not as dangerous as using a step drill bit because you know this is a big hole so drilling it uh, with a hand drill is pretty hard. Uh, then I welded this on and here I had a problem. Um, some of the welds were really nice but then in the next clip you see uh, it was almost like fireworks going on. I don't know what happened there but I straight away drilled a hole into the steel. But I patched it back up, you just have to go slowly and work in increments, uh, make sure you don't uh, totally melt through the steel. And after that I did a little bit of grinding and I used some uh, filler to fill everything up so it looks nice. Uh, it will be painted anyway, so it's, it's nicer if you don't see my welds. <laughs> and I wouldn't do structural welds yet, uh, I'm, I'm doing just cosmetic stuff like this, uh, but it's good practice and good fun. And to put this on the wall I had to use this little angle uh, adapter for the drill. Uh, there wasn't enough space otherwise. Um, and I'm going to cork this up. So now all the water can just drain in there and go straight into the sump pump. So with that the flood defenses are done. Everything looks better than before and it will be better than before. And here's the update about the driveway. This was why we we're building it. Uh, and this is straight after we're finished building it, so in around uh, March. And after that it grew in really nicely. The thyme here in the middle uh, looks amazing. It bloomed very early and in stages. Uh, the plants were still really small as you see here. I had to water it quite a bit and that care really paid out. It looks absolutely beautiful and I can't wait for next year when everything is blooming. This is the back of the garden back in February and this is how it looks like now. Everything is grown over with grass and it's really nice. So thanks for watching this rather unusual video but it had to be done I thought it would be interesting to share with you. If you found this interesting as well please subscribe to the channel that really helps me out making future videos. And my name is Max Maker, I make all kinds of stuff and I want to thank you for watching. Bye bye.